So everybody ran out and got their new handgun, but what type of holster do you actually need? All right, everybody, remember, I need you to stay healthy and I need you to stay hydrated. We are coming out of summertime, going into those cooler months of the year, eventually into winter. So you may not need the big 64 ounce battle bottle, but what you do need at least is the mini one right here because you've still got to drink water because you're going to train hard and you're going to work out out there. Now make sure you check out ironandfiddle.com and go check out the new battle bottles. There are multiple designs out there, multiple colors, multiple patterns that you could be looking for. Remember all the options you want. You've got Grimlocks on here, you've got Paracord, for an emergency. You've got a screw top up here. You've got one with a sippy cup style straw, drag handle here, paracord, uh, bungee cord that keeps it on. Of course, cell phone pouch, key hanger, molly on there. Really everything you could ever want in a water bottle. What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Mike here for ironinfidel.com. And today we're gonna talk about holster choices, specifically what type of holster do you actually need for your intended purpose. Do you need something like an outside the waistband paddle holster like this one right here? Do you need an inside the waistband appendix rig like this one right here? Or do you need a full on duty belt style holster like one we'll talk about here from Safari Land? Now, this isn't really about one brand or the other. It's really about what style of holster specifically is gonna fit your needs most overall because not everybody's gonna be able to run out and buy multiple holsters. You need to buy the holster that's going to fit your intended purposes right up front so you can begin to carry in a safe manner. All right, let's go ahead and start talking about the holsters that we are going to be working with today. First one is going to be a good old fashioned paddle style holster, which I think many people are familiar with. It fits along the belt line. You can get belt slide version that your belt actually goes through, but this paddle design just makes it super easy to put on and take off every single day. And you can get these in a retention or a non-retention. That means like some form of locking mechanism, whether it's thumb brake or not. Obviously optic ready, not optic ready, and not really specifically a brand we're gonna talk about, more overall the style with like this paddle or outside the waistband. Now there are some benefits to a holster like this. It's very easy to put on and take off, as you can see. That's all it takes right there. You do lose a little bit of concealability because you've got a big thing riding on the side of your hip here. However, the draw stroke is very similar to a duty style holster. Um, so it's very quick. It's very, very easy to draw from that position. And it's very natural if you have carried a gun or a gun belt before in your life. So carrying outside the waistband like that does have its advantages. It's very comfortable, easy to get to, but you do lose a little bit of that concealability. So next up, we're gonna talk about a good old fashioned appendix style rig like this. Something you're gonna put inside the belt line right in front of you, which makes it very easy to draw, pretty easy to conceal, but maybe not the most comfortable. All right, so carrying something like this appendix in the waistband rig or AIWB right here. So this one's pretty specific. It's got an X300 Surefire and the new Springfield Echelon pistol in there. Now there are gives and takes with any type of holster. Anytime you are carrying appendix rig like this, you have to be very concerned and very safe with your draw stroke, your trigger finger, obviously, because look where this thing is resting and where it is pointed, right? So we've got a lot of stuff going on down around here in our body, the groin area, the pelvic girdle, and uh, your femoral arteries and stuff. So is it a safe way to carry? That's really up to you and how safe you are and how much do you trust yourself when you draw. But again, there are always gives and takes. This is one of the fastest ways to draw because your hand just comes up right here. You don't have to move, position, anything like that. But it is uh, not necessarily the most comfortable way to carry because think of all this bulk, even with a smaller size pistol, say something like this, you are still gonna have a holster and a pistol and possibly a magazine, depending on what you wanna carry, right here inside your waistband. Now that always 
um, isn't the most comfortable place to carry. And as you can imagine trying to bend over while wearing this, you're gonna feel every bit of this whole rig down there on yourself. The other thing to think about too is holsters like this tend to get expensive, 100, 130 bucks, sometimes a little bit more. So you have to be willing to make that investment. Now, advantages obviously, very fast, very concealable. Disadvantages are maybe not the most comfortable outside the waistband on the hip is probably the most comfortable and maybe you just aren't comfortable carrying like this. And that's also not comfort as you wear it, but comfort in your mental state carrying is extremely important as well. And the last one that we're gonna talk about today is going to be the good old fashioned retention duty holster. So this is a Safari Land. It's got a locking retention mechanism right here, a thumb brake on it. There are different levels of retention. But this is most often what you're gonna see on law enforcement, the military, security, and people out there just training and having a good time. Now, the advantages to this are you're wearing on the outside of a belt. It's extremely comfortable. It's very fast once you get your practice draw down and everything. And ultimately, it's just a really nice setup. These are very durable, very, very battle-proven holsters all around the world. Uh, the difference is you're wearing it on a big belt system like this. So this is a very overt way to carry. Um, this is not your concealed carry style of holster. That is really something that you grow into or you decide you want to go do some really hardcore training and stuff and you need a locking retention holster. That's really what that kind of holster is for. Now, again, there are advantages and disadvantages to all of these styles of holsters. So let's recap a little bit here. We've got our duty style holster overt carry, very comfortable, very fast, very secure. And if you're attending any train or you carry a gun for a living, oftentimes more than not, you're gonna have to have a big retention duty setup like that. Now, when we get into our paddle holster right here, um, again, very comfortable, can be concealable depending on the size, the size of the holster, the size of the pistol. Um, wear it on the outside of the waistband it can be a pancake paddle style holster like this or it can be a belt loop through holster really all up to you um, quick on the draw but maybe not as concealable as some other stuff you're going to have the big bump on the side of you right there um, ultimately though very good holster again we're not talking about any specific brands here today just styles and the appendix rig here so this is the way i carry a lot i have several different you know, appendix style holsters in different sizes. This is the largest I would ever carry. Most times I'm carrying something like a compact, not a full size with the you know, extended 20 round mags, but pretty comfortable, extremely fast on the draw, very concealable up front. You do have those safety and practice concerns. You need to practice with a holster like this to ensure that your trigger finger and everything, your draw stroke is solid. Um, ultimately it may not be comfortable if you're moving, drawing around, that's really where the other two come in specifically. If you want to concealed carry something on the outside of the waistband, because if you bend over in this, you definitely feel it. Even sitting in this for a long time in the car, you know, the way you got to put your seatbelt on and everything, it can be a little bit much. So ton of advantages here too, but it's always a give and take between any of these holsters. And it really just comes down to figuring out your focus. If you just got your first pistol and you just want to have your carry on, you've got your CCW class, you've got your license, or you're in a constitutional carry state, you need some form of concealed carry holster. It's going to be more along the lines of this paddle holster or something like an appendix rig, although you can get inside the waistband holsters that are kind of similar to that as well, and you can wear them on that three o'clock side of your body or wherever you want. I just wouldn't uh, advise behind the back because then as you draw, you're basically gonna be flagging people all around you. So it's really up to you. First thing you gotta do once you have your pistol is ensure that you're trained, you know what you're doing, you're safe. And then you have to figure out how you wanna carry. And that's really gonna come down to how safe you feel you are, how safe you feel it is to carry like that, how comfortable do you wanna be, and how much do you need to conceal what is on you. And that's gonna be different for every single one of us. So again, I hope this video helped you out. It's Mike here with ironinfidel.com. Make sure you check out the battle bottles. Like I said, if you want the big one, we got the big one. If you want the small one, we got the small one. It's everything you want in a water bottle. I carry mine every day, everywhere I go, whether it's the gym or out here on the range. So head over to ironinfidel.com and check them out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave us a comment down below on whether you like videos like this. And if they are helpful, whether you're a new gun owner or you've been around guns your entire life because there are things that we all maybe don't think about until somebody else brings it up. So subscribe, like, comment, share all that good stuff. Keep doing it on the range.